If you're stuck in a toxic workplace where every day feels like a battle, you're not alone. You work too hard for too long to let bullying and burnout break you. But here's the thing, maybe quitting isn't an option for you right now. With outside responsibilities piling up, you have to stay. That's why in this video, I'm sharing five practical strategies to protect your mental health and minimize the misery at your job, even in the worst environments. If you don't take action, it's only a matter of time before stress takes over and walking away could derail everything you've built. Surviving a toxic workplace often requires coping mechanism to manage stress, anxiety, and burnout. In this video, I will share a practical approach to self-care for those of you in toxic work environments and without the option to leave quite yet. Working in a toxic work environment leads to feelings of fear, isolation, and helplessness. You might feel like no one truly understands what you're going through or that speaking up could jeopardize your job. These emotions are exhausting, but recognizing them is the first step to regaining control over your well-being. Hi, my name is Nyla Pond, and on this channel, we prefer working to live, not living to work. If this is something you're interested in, feel free to stick around. Before we start, I want to make it clear that in this video, I am not going to be telling you to quit. I know it's not always an option, so we're not going to focus on that. What I will share are practical tips and strategies for you to cope in the meantime. If you're miserable at your job, but you can't quit, this is a video you will not want to miss. How to identify a toxic work environment. A toxic work environment is where atmosphere and behaviors harm your well-being, making work feel more stressful and sometimes even harmful. It can include things like poor communication from leadership, lack of respect, constant negativity, or being micromanaged. In these workplaces, you might feel overworked, underappreciated, or even fearful of speaking out. Common signs of a toxic workplace include high turnover, gossip, and unrealistic expectations that lead to burnout. Essentially, it's an environment that takes more from you than it gives back. A few years ago, I was in a workplace just like this. I worked grueling hours without overtime compensation. The work was high stakes with little to no reward. It felt so draining. It's imperative to recognize a toxic workplace early on. That way you can protect yourself by setting boundaries way before things escalate. Here are some things to look out for. Number one, poor communication. If leadership is unclear, unapproachable, or inconsistent in delivering information, it's a red flag. Poor communication often leads to confusion, misalignment, and lack of trust. If you're left uncertain of what your role or responsibilities are, it can signal deeper issues within the company culture. Number two, no respect for boundaries. Pay attention to how company handles work-life balance. If you notice an expectation of employees being available around the clock, constantly working overtime, or sacrificing personal time without compensation or recognition, it's a sign of toxic workplace. Boundaries should be respected in a healthy work environment. Number three, poor workplace culture. If there's frequent gossip, negativity, or clicks, it's an indication of toxic culture. A workplace where coworkers undermine each other or where drama overshadows collaboration can drain both your energy and morale. If you sense a lack of support and constant tension between colleagues, it's a major red flag. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I encourage you to share it with somebody who's struggling in a toxic work environment. We're not alone in this, and by sharing these strategies, you can help someone else protect their mental health and navigate a challenging work environment. Acknowledging that you might be stuck in a toxic workplace is the first step to protecting yourself and your peace. Now, let's see what you can do to make it a little bit more bearable. Number one, set clear boundaries. Setting boundaries is the key to protecting your mental and emotional energy, especially in a toxic work environment. When you define what's acceptable for your time and energy, like not answering emails after work hours or saying no to unreasonable requests, you take control of what little you have control of. Boundaries help you keep a buffer between you and negativity. They allow you to focus on your well-being. It's not always easy, but when you're clear and consistent with your limits, it helps reduce burnout and keeps you from getting too caught up in the chaos. To communicate boundaries effectively without escalating conflict, be clear and direct, but polite. For unreasonable requests, say something like, I'm unable to take more on right now, but I can prioritize X. When trying to limit after hours communication, respond with, I'm happy to address this during work hours. For breaks, calmly state, I'm taking my break right now. I will be back in 15 minutes. The key is to stay calm, avoid over explaining, and use neutral language. Stick to the boundaries while showing you're still committed to the work within reasonable limits. Consistency helps reinforce these boundaries over time. What boundaries have you set at your job to protect your mental health? Let me know down below in the comments. Number two, prioritize self-care outside of work. Toxic workplaces can severely affect both mental and physical health, leading to stress, anxiety, burnout, or even physical symptoms like fatigue and headaches. The constant pressure and negativity drain your energy, which is why self-care becomes essential. Prioritizing activities that help you recharge, whether it's exercise, meditation, or simply disconnecting, can restore balance, reduce stress, and protect your well-being. Being. Some practical steps to self-care include establishing a routine for relaxation, exercise, and hobbies. 
You can also spend time with supportive friends or family. And of course, prioritize sleep and nutrition to keep your energy levels up and to nourish you from inside out. Mindfulness techniques like meditation, journaling, and breathing exercises are great ways to de-stress after work. Try a simple meditation. Sit quietly, focus on your breath, and bring your attention back when your mind wanders. Journaling can help you process your thoughts. Just write freely about your thoughts or emotions. For quick relief, practice deep breathing. Inhale slowly for four seconds, hold for four seconds, and exhale for four seconds. These exercises help calm the mind, reduce stress, and create space between you and that day's challenges, allowing you to unwind and recharge effectively. Number three, avoid engagement with toxicity. Disengaging from gossip, negative office politics, or toxic behaviors is crucial to protect your mental well-being and to avoid being pulled in into unnecessary drama. Participating, on the other hand, can escalate stress, damage relationships, and make the workplace even more toxic. By staying neutral and focused, you maintain professionalism and safeguard your emotional energy. Here are some practical steps to avoid engaging in toxicity at work. Keep your interactions with others brief and professional. Avoid emotional reactions to toxic comments. Focus on your tasks and goals rather than the gossip. Make sure to create an emotional separation between work and home. Don't take the toxic workplace stress home with you. To create mental and emotional space between work and home, set a clear end to your workday by logging off at a specific time. You can establish a transition routine, such as a meditation or a short walk. Avoid checking work emails after hours and focus on personal activities to recharge. Number four, build a support system. A strong support system provides emotional and practical help when navigating tough work environments. Family, friends, or trusted work colleagues can provide a space to safely vent, share advice, and gain new perspective. The support can help reduce feelings of isolation, boost your resilience and encourage healthy coping strategies in a toxic workplace. We've covered friends and family, but perhaps you have a mentor that can offer some solid advice, or perhaps you prefer to speak to a professional such as a therapist. If neither of these individuals are available to you for whatever reason, try searching for online support groups. Perhaps you can find some solidarity or even helpful advice from people who have gone through the same thing. And sometimes it's just so much easier to talk to a stranger. Number five, know your exit strategy. Even if quitting is not an immediate option, having an exit strategy offers a piece of mind by giving you a sense of control over your own future. Whether it's building your resume, saving money, or building new skills, knowing you have a plan to eventually move on reduces anxiety and provides hope for better opportunities. This is the number one tip that saved me. I knew I couldn't leave that job, so I sucked it up while working on my resume and looking for other positions during my breaks and lunch hour. Somehow, even just looking at other positions made me feel better. It gave me strength to keep going. Three months later, I was handing in my letter of resignation, but I don't think I could have handled those three months as well as I did if I didn't have the reassurance that this isn't forever. Start by updating your resume or your LinkedIn profile. You can discreetly look for new opportunities or perhaps building new skills that will help with future roles. Additionally, if you're planning to eventually leave a toxic job, it's important to build an emergency fund. Start by setting a savings goal, about three to six months worth of living expenses. Begin by cutting out unnecessary expenses, such as dining out or subscription services, and put that money directly into a separate savings account. You can also automate small contributions from each paycheck, even if it's just a few dollars a month. Over time, this will add up and provide you with that financial cushion. Avoid dipping into these funds unless absolutely necessary. They're there to provide you with security and flexibility when the time is right. Remember, set your boundaries and stick to them. While you can't change a toxic environment overnight, you can protect your mental health and take control over how you react to the negativity. Have you experienced toxicity in a workplace? What are some strategies that you've tried to get through the day? Share them down below. Perhaps I will try your suggestions as well. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. It really helps this channel grow. And share this video with a friend who might be struggling with the same situation. As always, keep glowing and stay inspired. I'll see you in the next one.